There's a very well-known cyber attack to establish a man in the middle that can break normal web encryption. Normally, this is an attack expected from hackers. It is incredibly shocking to tell you that most people have no idea that they're allowing governments and also many employers this ability to break encryption because of a lack of understanding of technology. I was contacted by an informant from Russia and was told that in Russia to access some government services online, they were required to download and install a particular program. And I will explain what this particular program does later. But the average person is tasked with seemingly innocuous tasks like installing some software from the government or from an employer. And this software does something that the person doesn't understand. Today, I will tell you that the average Russian citizen is actually downloading something that completely eliminates web encryption. I'm certain this is done in other authoritarian countries in the Middle East as well. I will discuss how someone, either a hacker, an employer, an antivirus, or a government, can trick you to install something that will break your web encryption, which is called TLS. This means someone would be able to see your banking transactions, your social media traffic, and your private conversations. And if the attacker is large enough, like the state, then this enables mass surveillance. I'm talking about standard internet encryption here, not the end-to-end -end encryption, which is separate and safer in theory, but is being dismantled by new laws, as I've discussed in recent videos. Our entire standard internet encryption is based on an assumption of trust, and we know what it means to assume it makes an ass of you and me. Stay right there to be fully informed about this enormous threat that pretty much destroys our regular internet encryption right under our nose and with our tacit approval. When you visit a website on a browser, you will see that the connection uses HTTPS in the URL, and that signifies an encrypted connection. New browsers will put a lock sign to indicate that as well. This encryption protocol can also be used outside of a browser. For example, the same encryption is used in email. Generally, this cryptographic method is known as transport layer security, or TLS previously known as SSL. But let's first introduce you to RSA certificates, which is the main tool that allows TLS to function. An RSA certificate is made up of a pair of files that are generated together. One is called public key and the other is known as the private key. These files just contain a very large number, which is used to power the math in the encryption. Here's an example of a public key. And here's an example of a private key. Every website announces their public key when you connect, so this is not a secret. Here's the simple logic for how encryption is done. The public key is used to encrypt messages, so encrypting is easily done. However, to decrypt the message requires that the recipient have the private key, and this is supposed to be a secret. So a public key allows anyone to pass a message by giving that message sender a pre-addressed locked box to insert the message. But only the recipient is supposed to be able to unlock that box with a private key. Here's where the trust problem occurs. How do you know the public key that you see is actually from the actual owner of the platform? If you're given a fake public key to google.com, then your traffic can be intercepted and seen by whoever has the private key to the fake google.com. This idea of excluding fake certificates was supposed to be handled by a chain of entities called trusted certificate authorities. And there's a chain of them starting with a top level or root certificate authority. These entities are supposed to be real organizations with bonds, insurance, physical security, and audited procedures to ensure that they can be trusted by the average user of the internet. This theoretical authority is embedded into your device by the installation of a root public key certificate on your computer. Often they are pre-installed by the operating system. Now here's the problem. If someone installs an alternate 
root certificate, then whoever controls the private key of that root certificate can also issue certificates for any website. Fake ones. And since the fake authority can create these fake certificates, then they will also have the fake private key. This means that there is no website that can hide the traffic from them. I'm not trying to explain the way RSA certificates work in detail here. I have another video explaining it in technical detail. I'm just giving you a big picture. But the general concept I'm explaining here is that if someone asks you to run a particular program on your computer, and that program silently updates the root certificate to be something else not originally authorized by the OS on that computer, then you're basically allowing that party to surveil your traffic. If you want to prove this concept to yourself, I will give you an easy example. First, I'm going to check my own website, brax.me, as a control. And I can see that the browser sees the certificate as being issued by Let's Encrypt, which is correct. This is the actual issuer of the certificate. I know this because I set it up myself as the owner of the site. This is a Windows computer, by the way, and on here I will also show you the current list of root certificates. To display that, I run mmc.exe, then I add the certificate snap in. Then I click on Trusted Certificates to see the list of current trusted certificates. Now for this experiment, what I will do is to download and install Avast Antivirus. I just did a standard full install of Avast and now we're going to look at the certificate list of trusted authorities. You will now see that Avast is listed as a root certificate authority. In other words, the Avast installation program created a fake root certificate. And to highlight this further, I will now go back to my original website, Braxme, and look at the certificate again. Now you will see that it is no longer the original certificate. Avast has provided the website with a fake certificate. What are the implications of this? This means that Avast has the private key since it is their certificate being used now instead of the website's original. It also means they now read everything in plain text. No HTTPS or TLS. The party with the private key can decrypt all traffic. Avast claims they do this to spot phishing. They're scanning the traffic for common scams supposedly and then stopping them from reaching you or you from clicking on them. Whether that's the only purpose is for you to decide. I for one will not use an Avast antivirus or any other antivirus for that matter. Now let's go back to the Russian case I told you about at the beginning. The informant, I don't know who it is, specifically told me that the software they install actually creates a new root certificate. Precisely what Avast does in this example. Same as any hacker. If a hacker sends you an email while you're at Starbucks working on your computer and you click on the email attachment, likely it will install a fake root certificate. And then while watching you on that network, the hacker can then see what your internet traffic is going to all sites and get your information. For example, like your banking info and banking login. But in a government example, the way this works, if the mass surveillance systems intercept all internet traffic, then those using fake certificates they provide can be read and recorded. In the past, a government does not even have to force you to install a fake root certificate. It was already done for you. This is a real story. Symantec purchased VeriSign, which is the de facto original trusted root certificate authority of the internet. They were the original authority for the old SSL. Then Symantec purchased another company called Blue Code Systems. Blue Code Systems built surveillance hardware for governments. And what powered these systems were the root certificates they issued as an intermediate trusted authority, trusted by VeriSign. Understand, though, that VeriSign is the same company. So basically, Symantec authorized the deception. Blue Code Systems then had the capability to capture all internet TLS traffic and decrypt it since it was a trusted authority for the entire internet. Well, except they were caught by Google. Google now includes the original certificates in Chrome so they can tell if someone is faking their certificates. This is called certificate pinning. 
they caught Symantec and basically banned all certificates from Symantec and their sign. Despite the claims of supposed innocence, the company basically was caught in a lie. Through Wall Street hocus pocus, Symantec was then broken up and sold without acknowledging fault or liability. Now it is the Norton LifeLock company and the enterprise side was absorbed by Broadcom. The point of this discussion is to tell you that we have a problem here. People in Russia are unwittingly told to click on some link to access government websites when what is happening is the installation of a fake root certificate. This I'm sure is being done in many countries with authoritarian regimes. Blue Coat Systems apparently sold their surveillance equipment to many Middle East and Latin American regimes. Employers, of course, install fake root certificates all the time. After all, it is a work computer and they own it, so they don't want any secrets. Employers were big users of systems like Blue Coat to spy on employees. Later on, I will tell you how to tell if your system has a man in the middle through a fake root certificate. I have an app, by the way, that does this exact thing on Android, but even without an app, you can detect a man in the middle, just as I showed you with the Avast example. But before I do that, let me tell you another problem. I just looked at the root certificates installed by Windows 11 on this computer, and I'm seeing a whole slew of root certificates that certainly have sketchy characteristics. First of all, it still has semantic and VeriSign certificates. This, I'm sure, is a catch-all for older software. Komodo bought VeriSign, but I will not allow that, so I dragged the certificates to my untrusted certificates list. But the other questionable thing here are the various Microsoft root certificates. Microsoft is not a legitimate root authority on the internet. A root authority is vetted by a higher entity to make sure someone is watching them. I told you that real trusted authorities have to be vetted, bonded, insured, and audited to make sure they follow safe procedures, including physical security, and the auditing is performed by third parties. Not that it always works, as we learned from VeriSign, but at least it is a third-party authority and they require documentation of what website certificates are issued and to whom. But by Microsoft installing itself as a root authority on Windows, it means Microsoft at any time can look at all of your TLS traffic on this computer. This is another reason you are forced to trust your OS. You can see how easy it is to surveil your device if they wanted. This would be the same with Apple. I don't know the effects of this yet, but I drag all the Microsoft certificates to my untrusted certificates area. We should do this and then see what consequences occur. So far, none on mine. I realized that Microsoft, just like Apple, use certificates to provide app signatures. This way they can ensure that an app has been vetted to be from the OEM. However, in spite of this potentially useful use, it really undermines my privacy. I encourage you to look at the root certificates on your computer and decide which ones you can really trust. Just make a note of them so if they cause a problem for some app you need, then you can undo it and restore the root certificate back. Now, each OS has a different method of storing root certificates. On Windows, it's kept in the registry. I think on Mac OS, it is kept in Keychain. Now, let me briefly explain how you can tell if you have someone faking certificates or if you have an active fake root certificate on your device. First, you need two different internet connections to do this. Let's say you have a work computer and a home computer. They're on a different network. One is on the office network and the other one is on your home network. This idea here is to identify if a network has a man in the middle or MITM. And to do this, we need a base network that does not have an MITM. Now go to a website that you normally go to. Maybe it's a bank or a social media platform. In my case, I'm going to use Braxme as my test site again. So on your browser, display the certificates of that website as shown on the browser. 
So I'll show you the two certificates I have side by side of Braxme as I showed earlier. If the certificates do not appear to be the same in the two different internet locations, then there's a man in the middle in one of them. Otherwise, they should be the same. The value to check is the SHA-256 signature. This is the quick check. My app Catch MITM on the Google Play Store does this dual check for you. Since it runs externally, it can do the second network check automatically. If the last version doesn't appear for you because you have a newer device, try installing it using apkpure.com. But without the app, the proper test requires two separate networks, and that is why the app can be very handy. Now, where would this test fail? If the MITM is a government, it is possible that the internet traffic is centralized and that you cannot verify the certificates properly, being that all networks in the country could have an MITM. If so, have a friend in a different country give you a photo of the certificate of that website. Again, the Catch MITM app solves all of that for you since the second network is in the USA and is on a server I control. So it's not going to have an MITM. I mentioned Google does certificate pinning so you can't fake a Google certificate when running Chrome. But you can using another browser. This is why it is actually safer to use Chrome for Google stuff. They prevent an MITM as long as you're using Chrome. Google cannot do this certificate validation outside of its own certificates, so the procedure I just described to check for an MITM will apply to any non-Google site. To summarize, you will see that the security and privacy in the internet is being held up by toothpicks. Even HTTPS or TLS can be extremely vulnerable. By the way, the mobile OSs don't allow an online viewer of certificates. I do have that app Catch MITM that you can download for Android, but iOS rejected the app. So there's no easy way to check for an MITM on an iOS device. Too bad. There's also no handy way to examine root certificates on mobile. End-to-end -end encryption was the only other method to ensure privacy and security of network traffic, and that's being attacked by these stupid governments too. So we won't have anything left soon. Folks, my company creates products that are intended to protect your privacy. We provide phones that have no centralized control and are invisible to big tech. We have various the Google phones in our store. These devices use an open source AOSP and have no Google on them and no Google ID, so they are invisible to Google. Check out our store for various models. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which does not log you. It has no traffic limits. It doesn't scream that you are on a VPN. We don't put thousands of you on a single server. We have Braxmail, which eliminates the metadata from your emails. This means no IP addresses and traces on your email that show where it came from. We give you five domains so you can partition your activities. We also offer webmail access from a browser. All these products are on the store on my app, Braxme. Sign up on there. You will not be asked to give any personal information to sign up. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.